We are continuing today with Friendly Rivalry. Hope you enjoy. Chapter 6 And don't forget, once you've picked your cover, your personality, when the camera is on, you cannot drop it until you're out of costume. Yagdrizil, or rather, Mukase, insisted, it could either make the media mad, or just straight up be disastrous. Izuku nodded, writing it down in the notebook he currently had gotten from Tenki as a gift for being fluent in Egyptian. This notebook was only for things he learned well here. Honestly, he wasn't sure who was more surprised he'd managed to become fluent in one of the languages in only a couple of months, him or Tenki. Or maybe the rest of the nursing home's occupants. Me and Kuro have no issues with that, of course, Mokose boasted. Of course not, Kuro snapped Kent to Kurosi. Normally, Izuku would hesitate to use such word, but it really fit here. We acted the same in and out of suit. Yeah, Izuku could tell, since it seemed like they acted the exact same, even nearly half a century later. Izuku finished up his summarized version of his summarized notes from today, and snapped the notebook closed. He wasn't actually done. Kuro still wanted to finish up his entire course on what spots in a building to target if you want to bring it down. Which had been preceded by a two-week-long lecture on what places to hit to make the most damage. It also doubled as a mild step into the psychology of villains that aim to make the most damage. Izuku figured it'd help him stop them from doing all that damage later. Don't you close that dang thing yet, Kuro grouched. Haha, <laughs> so he did get their attention with that. Izuku opened it up again obligingly, turning slightly to face Kuro instead of Mokose. After this was a test with Hiki, then whether he passed. He'd either have another week of practicing with her, or he'd move on to working with Bozai. Izuku wasn't quite sure what he'd be teaching that was different from Hiki, but he wasn't about to protest more learning. His grades had stayed basically the same, so no one seemed to notice that Izuku was muttering in different languages or that his notebooks were all in a mishmash of languages. Or that Izuku was getting stronger, slightly less like a bean sprout, or even that he was disappearing quickly after school to unknown places. Izuku didn't mind, of course. It meant he didn't have to field off unwanted questions. Once Kuro had finished with him, Izuku hurried to put away his notebook and strap on the weapons pouch Hiki had given him so long ago. He pulled on the gloves as well, relishing the slight pressure on his hands. He always liked having pressure on his body, and the gloves did that really well. He'd kind of taken to wearing them more than just when he was practicing, just because of how much he liked the pressure. It helped calm him a lot. Hiki was already practicing when he got out there, throwing knife after knife into a target. Everyone, every single one, hit the target, although that was expected. And Izuku could guarantee each one was hitting exactly where she intended even if it wasn't the bullseye. Oh, hey kid, 
Kiki said when she noticed him, which was almost immediately. Her skills hadn't dimmed much, even though she was long retired. Ready for a test? Izuku nodded, hoping he didn't look as nervous as he felt. He did. Kiki tactfully didn't mention it. The test will be simple, Kiki said, tapping the target. One of Elgir's skeletons will stand in front of this. Your job is to hit every vital point on the skeleton with a kunai after making an outline around it with shuriken. If you can't, no problem. We can try as many times as you need. Izuku nodded, steeling himself and ready to do his best. He had to get this right. Had to get it perfect. Had to show he was worth teaching more to. He didn't want to give this up now. He didn't think he could actually... He didn't think he could without actually taking a swan dive off of a roof. He threw his first shuriken, impaling it right next to the skeleton's arm. He didn't know when it got in there, but he also didn't care. On and on it went, Izuku impaling shuriken after shuriken into the target around the unflinching skeleton and not missing a thing. He nailed a cone eye through the vital points, eyes, throat, heart, kidney, and stomach. <laughs> Very good job, kiddo. Kiki praised, inspecting the skeleton after he stopped. Izuku, slightly more used to getting praised, did not burst into tears immediately, although he did start crying quietly. She was just so nice and kind and didn't care he was quirkless, and he didn't mind when he started crying. Oh, and now he's crying, bawling. She just giggled and handed him a tissue, patting him on the day head. One day, I'll manage to successfully compliment you enough that you won't burst into tears every time. You really don't have to, Izuku sniffled, blowing his nose with the tissue and going to put it in the tr nearby trash can. No, I really do. Kiki replied, clapping him on the back. All right, we'll keep working on accuracy and other situations, but I think you're good to start working with Guy. Is that what this is about? Izuku asked, blowing his nose again. Working with Bullseye, too? Well, he wanted to teach you, too, so we compromised. Kiki explained pulling one of the kanai out of the target with a grunt. I got to teach you basic aiming, and then all the fancy stuff to make sure you hit the target no matter what. And he gets to teach you all the good places to hit in Senban. <coughs> Senban will be good for you, kid. Bullseye. Well, guy, Izuku supposed, said while coming up to inspect the target. You can throw with a fair amount of strength, but Senban are more about accuracy and hitting the target exactly than strength. Senban also involve a lot of memorization of points on the human body so you can hit to make someone go down, then stay down. Higi agreed. So... We're trying not to overload you with too much work to do, and you can decide not to do something if you want. No thanks, Izuku quick squealed quickly. I'm glad to be here, and I'm happy to learn anything you'll teach me. If you insist, kid, Hiki replied, amused. Just don't burn out. Tell us if you need a break. Or tell Kuro and Mokose no. Guy added, laughing. They're running out of lesson plans you learned so fast. 
Sorry. Izuku mumbled sheepily. No, no, it's good. Guy was quick to reassure him. I haven't seen them this excited in a de decade or two. It's good for them. They get bored easily when they don't have anything to fight, Kiki said, laughing. Except they're too old to fight anyone physically, so they get antsy. So, keep up the good work, kid, Guy said, patting him on the back. We'll get you into UA yet. Izuku blinked at him owlishly. What? Did I ever say I wanted to go to UA? We assumed you want to, Hiki broke into his mumble stream that was slipping into ancient Greek. It's the biggest hero school around. The other hero schools are, are fine as well, if you don't want to go for UA, of course. No! Izuku shouted, shrinking back when they glanced at him in surprise. I mean, yeah, I wanted to go to UA if possible. I just didn't really think it would be possible because I'm corkless. UA allows corkless students, does it not? Hiki asked, confused. Well, yeah. Izuku had looked that up when he was diagnosed, double checking to see if he could still be a hero. I think it's the only one that does. I'd have to check, but I think you're correct, Guy said, pulling out his phone, presumably to check. I still don't see the issue. I'm quirkless, Izuku tried to explain futilely, and Hiki asked patiently, Kid, you know what age we're from, right? We were all active before All Might even entered high school. Maybe before he even was born. The age we grew up in had a far higher quirkless percentage than your generation. What Hiki is trying to say is that we don't have the same biases your generation and the one above you has. Quirkless to us never meant useful. It always just meant different, Guy explained. Quirkless have their own strengths and weakness, just like any quirked person. Plus, without a quirk, you aren't held back by a fake attachment to the idea that anything can be solved with your quirk. Izuku knew what they were trying to say, but he was having some difficulty accepting it. After he'd spent almost his entire life being reminded at every corner that quirkless meant useless. It's alright, fledgling, Hiki said after a moment. We'll let you process later. For now, why don't we start some variation drills? People won't always stand still and let you hit them, or let you throw one kanai to determine distance and elevation then throw a second one to hit them. They won't always let you stand there to throw stuff at them either, unless they're extremely stupid, Guy asked. Did, although you'll have a better chance at them doing that if you make them underestimate you because you're quirkless. Make them underestimate you and then utterly destroy them, Hiki said, grinning viciously. Slice open their guts and make them watch their own organs spill out of their body as punishment for underestimating you. Izuku took a wary step away from her and she pouted. I'm not slicing anyone's stomach open. He replied, inching away from her slowly. Fine, she huffed. Just make them regret it and make them think about their crimes in prison then. Maybe cripple them for life or something. And teaching you to do that will be my job, Guy said, grinning. But he can have you for today. I'll keep you for the rest of the week. Okay, Izuku agreed quickly.